<laughs> Shut up, John. Hey, it's Andy Baragani here, and I'm here for a secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we are going to put Chris's super taster abilities to the test. This is Gabriella Camara's tuna tostada. We're challenging Chris to replicate this exact dish with every ingredient in just one day. He'll be able to taste it, touch it, smell it, but at no point will he be able to see this dish. Because he only has one day, we're going to give him three lifelines, but there is a catch. Using them will dock points off his final score. At the end of the day, we'll come back to see his final creation and I'll be the judge. Brad Leone's one year aged miso. This is gonna be like weirdly specific, but I thought I smelled like migas, you know, like some kind of like tortilla egg, like something a little bit crispy fried. Huh, so like maybe a crispy tortilla thing. Maybe I'm not like so crazy after all. It's a really good tostado, I have to say. It's like delightful. It's like it actually has like tons of character to it. Like almost like you made a tostada from like a Vista Hermosa tortilla or something like that. Ooh. Ah, uh, that was lime. What are you? Oh. Honestly, you feel an avocado out of context and it's a little spooky. I'm just saying, okay? What is this? At first I thought maybe it was smoked salmon, but it doesn't taste smoky. It's gotta be like raw fish, but it's just like, tuna or salmon. And I'm gonna, I mean, I'm leaning a little bit more towards tuna. It's tricky because there's just like, there's stuff all over it. I mean, there's like some kind of like spicy mayo situation, like smoky kind of um, like dried chili. I'm trying to think of like, you know, who the chef would be, what influences like, clearly they're looking at Mexico with that tostada, but clearly, you know, they're also seemingly looking to possibly like Japan as well. And like, could that chili heat be coming from something like Togarashi? And then like that shreddy something. Ah, what the f is that? Looks like we broke you. You can just cut, I'll be here for the next hour. <laughs> This specific component is just really throwing me because it's just like so incredibly neutral, but it's like neutral sweet. It's got some texture, but it just doesn't have like flavor. Soon I'm gonna run out of it and then I'm not gonna have like anything left to do. I'm gonna like go in the bathroom and cry. This is really bothering me. There is a quality to it that's like I know I should get, and I'm just not. And, and that's like, it's really under my skin. The texture is giving me like a vertically shredded, like kind of scallion, and yet it doesn't really have any like oniony bite to it. Maybe what it actually is, is kind of a sweated bit of leek. And that's like what's giving you the sweetness and a little bit of the earthiness, but like zero bite to it. Who's putting cooked down leek on top of raw tuna and then with some like creamy, creamy, you know? Who is? Didn't we do this one before? Don't get caught up on the it. nubs. The nubs are all I see. Chris, you're, you're wearing a blindfold. <laughs> Should I know this? Is this a thing? Is this like what the kids are wearing? There's a little bit happening that's kind of store-bought. There's a little bit happening that is conceptual. Corn tortillas, neutral oil, Hellman's, but then also QP, mayo, lime, avocado, leeks, tuna, togarashi. And then if it weren't togarashi, I think we could say sort of like cayenne or ancho chili powder. Summer's gonna love me. Um, unless she has it in the back, in which case she will also love me. I don't know, I'm just curious like what makes it back here. I mean, if you're looking for like sushi quality tuna in Fairmont, like you better have a plan, right? <laughs> right? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> I mean, 
mean, this is them. It's them. You got the Togarashi, got the QP, but then why is this honking big bag of masa here? It's like, if you're using a tortilla with great flavor, like the Vista Hermosa we were talking about, like that's kind of where it's at, right? Summer, you did not make your own tortilla, did you? Could I answer that? You can't answer that. Could the tuna, assuming that's what it is, have been like, you know, kind of seared the way you do sometimes, or at least like the way we did in the 80s? Um, for those of us who are around in the 80s to see such awesomeness as Iron Eagle, one and two in the theater. But I don't think it was because tuna, when you cook it, obviously the texture completely transforms. I, I didn't get anything like that. I also didn't get like any flavor on the tuna. Summer, this is sushi quality, right? Okay, thank God. I'm cutting it against the grain, like get like a nice kind of cross section there. Definitely not trying to go this way just cause you're never gonna achieve a clean slice. Whereas like if you come across this way, I think you can do just that. I'll wash everything down and then another piece of plastic wrap over this. I'm gonna cut this leek in half lengthwise. I, they are like the filthiest vegetable. I like leeks. I like them, they're fine. But like, it's a lot of fuss and for what? Great, you made a leek. It didn't necessarily taste like an allium. And it would make sense that, you know, a cooked leek becomes very mild. Salt's gonna help start to draw out moisture from those leeks. And then I might cover it and just let it kind of steam out a little bit. It'll just make the leek give up its texture a little bit. I mean, this would like look sort of cool, you know, on a piece of fish. Little chew, little soft. Feel pretty good about that. All right, I think next we're gonna fry up some tortillas. And that means like practically doing a deep fry on them. I so wanna just like frisbee one of these things. Wanna grab it, Matt? All right, reach. Oh, it faded left. It's okay, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna put them in at 350. These really wanna puff up a lot, which is great if you're making puffy tacos, but not as good if you're making tostada. So you can like sandwich it between a couple of spatulas or a couple of flat things. That looks like pretty good. That is it, it's a match. In my brain, like something's going like ding, 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 you know? Which brings us to mayonnaise. So mayonnaise, obviously, you know, it's an emulsion of usually egg, but it can be another binder as well. The QP just doesn't taste as good to me, frankly. I just like that the Hellman's is kind of just bringing like a little like richness, super creamy. I don't know, we, we can work with that for the minute and see what happens. But in terms of our chilies, so we have ancho, cayenne, sashimi, togarashi, and then just regular togarashi. So this is the ancho to start things off. Little heat, little warmth, cayenne, way more intensity very little else kind of going on. This like shichimi togarashi has like a lot of texture to it. I felt something just like a lot smoother. The pepper only style, I think the texture definitely disappears a little bit more. Thinking back, I guess the thing that really stood out was just that it tasted like creamy and fatty, but that it also had heat. Mm. What what do you got in your notes? Can I, can, can I call him? Well, it's, it's your notes, yeah. Smoky is one of the things you said. Did I? Did I say smoky? Smoky. Smoky. Okay. Well, maybe let's go with some chipotle and adobo and see where we get. I have that. You have that. Chipotle in adobo makes sense too, just because like that super intense adobo sauce has so much chili heat in it. Also, the nice thing about it is it's decided lack of texture. I'm finding myself wanting to reach for lime. This feels like it wants balance. Yeah. I already, like, I'm not even sure what I would do to change when I do the dish again. Um, 
gonna go with like one big piece. Avocado, then leek. So here we are. This is my first attempt at this dish. I mean, overall, am I feeling terrible? No, I'm not feeling terrible. I still feel like I don't understand this dish. So in terms of ingredients, I, you know, I'd say I'm at like an 80. Taste. I'm gonna give myself a 93. It's a crispy, high quality tortilla, a piece of tuna, creamy chipotle mayo. Honestly, if the original dish isn't a leek, well, I figured out how to like make the same thing with a leek. So, you know, you're welcome world. Parents, I mean, come on. Like that's gotta be at least a 90, right? Right? The techniques today is where I'm having a hard time kind of understanding where I would be off. I cannot make a better tortilla than the Vista Hermosa tortilla. If I'm gonna make mayo, it's gonna be because I'm putting olive oil into it, good quality oil. Like, I don't think the dish is, would be better for me making either of these two components. Plan for next time is like, honestly, go upstairs, play defense, read some emails, and then come back and just serve you the other tostada I didn't already mangle. Oh, that's just painful. Okay, well, listen, I feel, I feel stuck. I feel like there's clearly something going on that I don't get, which is very often the case. So one of my lifeline options is for three points off my score. If you can tell me one key ingredient that you think I'm missing, I would love to hear it. The eye twitch is back in a big way. Really? It's soy, right? Really? On that fish, there is soy. What I'm stunned at is like, soy is like a very obvious flavor that should really stand out. And I'm really questioning why I didn't get it. And like, you know, that, that's just like, it's really actually a bit depressing to me. I'm pretty much just sitting here kind of making shit up. Like the more flavor I add to this, the more I sit there and ask myself like, how is it possible that I missed this on the first pass? Now the other eye is twitching. It went from the right, your right, my left, to your left, my right. Look, it's not bad. What little clings to the fish, like it's honestly somewhat subtle. Is there a technique or an ingredient that can help minimize the flavor of the marinade? Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to anybody? Remember, it's not my recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Chris, if we potentially have the option to do another tasting, would that be helpful? Let's do it. F it. The new format's out. Old format is back. Fire up the music. We're, we're, we're coming in hot, okay? I'm gonna run upstairs. like everywhere you go, there's just like squidge. All right, so that was one piece of fish on here. Or no, there's two pieces of fish. The soy is very subtle. I can imagine I'm maybe smelling something a little kind of toasty. Summer, do you have toasted sesame oil? I do not. God. Ugh. All right, well. You better get this out of here because um, uh, my contacts are like slowly working their way into the back of my eyeballs. So that's definitely gonna ruin the old day. So just, just take it away. You know, maybe this was a big mistake. Being given soy sauce, you know, I have to say like, it's still like tasting it the second time. 
you could blow right past it. You know, hit the brakes, boom, soy flies right by. There's a part of me that's like, my God, like, should I just have one try to get the dish right? Chris, are you doing anything differently with the wheat? No, Kelly. Because if somebody wanted me to do something differently, they should have put a little more flavor in it so I'd know what to do. Shot fired. Like these, these are picked up a little too much color. I think I gotta go with like the originals. So this time I'm going with two smaller pieces of fish and one piece of avocado. Okay, I'm good to go. When you have a dish with like 30 ingredients, but it's a dish that you sort of know or think you know, you can, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't want to give away my secrets, um, but I mean, you can practically guess 15 of the ingredients right off the bat. You know what I mean? If like, if you know what the dish is, your taste buds can only tell you so much, you know, salt, fat, acid, heat, sweet, you get texture as a bonus and that's it. And then you just have to recognize flavors from there. You know, it's as much about intuiting what the dish should be as what it is, you know? Okay, I'm ready, Summer. I've got hands on cloches. I present to you Gabriela Camara's tuna tostada from Contramar. Okay. Okay, that's leak. I'm sorry, like everything else could be totally wrong, but if that's a leak, I walk away happy. I mean, a cooked leak? I think raw or tender, let's just say fish and crunchy tortilla, dynamite combination. Honestly, just leak. It's just one word, leak. I don't even know like where this lands me. I don't know. I feel like I'm somewhere around like an 83. There's a part of me that's like, even if I don't do the dish correctly, like if I'm the dish that people feel like tastes better, then um, I'm still happy. Taste, 90. I think all the right techniques are pretty much represented here. I would give myself like a, a 90 for this one. Parents, I mean, come on, Morgan. Morgan has let his man bun down. It's all spilling out. Come on, right? Just, just, just say, appearance, what is it? It looks pretty identical. Buns out, guns out, pretty identical. I mean, in my world, that's a 95. <sighs> Matt f***ed up, couldn't book the talent, so we don't have a judge today. <laughs> no, it's cool. We are gonna be zooming in with our judge next week, hopefully. So we're gonna pick this back up then and I will get my final scores. Hey, Beanie, you wear your cape, bud? Allie, upstairs and big hand washer, Whenever, right? Whenever you're ready, Two. Andy. Okay. No, I, by the way, I'm wearing my emotional support hoodie. So whatever, whatever is about to happen, I'm prepared because okay. I've got my armor, okay? Um, so the ingredients, you gave yourself a 90? That sounds possible. That was like two weeks ago, which which might as well be two years. That felt a little high just looking at the fact that you did miss the soy. Again. Oh, I called in a lifeline for the soy. You missed the orange juice. Orange juice? I want your honest opinion here, okay? A little bit unorthodox to coat raw slabs of fish in oil and then give it a wash in a ponzu. Once there's oil on that fish, it's gonna sure. be even less likely to soak in any of those flavors. In my defense. So you clearly have a lot of opinions on the actual dish. <laughs> I have to just judge on the ingredients that you included and what you didn't. Oh, come on, Andy, bring Brad back. <laughs> Oh my God. You missed the finishing salt, which I thought you would pick up just from the texture. You gave me- Finishing yourself... salt. Oh my <laughs> God. Every little bit I can. So if you gave yourself a 90, I- For ingredients, he gave himself an 83. Oh, you gave yourself an 83. Wow. Ha, humility, which is worth extra points. 
So if that's the case, then there's no way I can match your 83. So I'm going to give you an 80. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Now is for the tough time to talk about technique, though. Because <laughs> I think the first bit is that you didn't make your own mayonnaise. You know, <laughs> like, this is where I do feel a deep sense of shame. I, I can't remember, was it 50%? olive oil 50 percent neutral what was it it's all olive oil olive oil okay i mean i can believe that i guess you did fry your own tortillas you did fry the leeks i think the temperatures were slightly off my thing though is like if you're gonna if you're gonna fry the leek fry the leek but like fried color oh yeah thin like super lacy frizzly I also love Gabriella so much, so I am never going to- Yeah, you're like going to take a f***ing bullet for her. 100%. She's perfect in me. I, I spent some time with <laughs> She's her. pretty awesome. And the funny thing is I went to a restaurant before I met her. And then once I met her, it kind of made, made so much sense. It's like there's so much thought and there's a reason for each step and ingredient that's added. It's never too much. It's never not enough. The other items, the marinating the fish with oil first, instead you just kind of added your ponzu-like sauce directly onto the fish. You gave your technique a 90, and I think like, that's insane. I'm gonna be rough. I'm gonna just go there <laughs> and give you a 68. <laughs> <laughs> but look at it this way. The taste you gave yourself a 90, I'm gonna stick with 90 because I have no doubt. and. I trust you. Appearance, again, you gave yourself a 95. Looks good. I'll stick with 95. So your overall score that you gave yourself is a 90, and I'm giving you an 83. So it's really being an A minus student versus being a you know B minus B student. So it's fine. I understand. This is rare for you. <laughs> I had some, I had some big wins, but I don't know. It's just, you, you always end up kind of getting distracted by something that you probably shouldn't. Feel, you should feel good. And this gives you a reason when we get to a point where we are able to kind of travel, uh, you will go to Mexico city and you'll go to Contramar and you'll have the famous tuna tostadas. When I think of Contramar, I think of like the fish, you know, with sure. the red and the green sauce and- Her agua chile is incredible. I mean, the restaurant is every time I've gone there. I always go there. It's always so refined and um, and beautiful, just like her. And maybe you could check with her about why she dips the fish in the oil before putting it in the ponzu. You know, just saying, if you guys are so close, maybe you could just like text her or something. 